feel that breeze? <laughs> We're so back. fucking cold in here. <laughs> no, I wish. Yeah. That was my breath. I was trying to go for an intro. I wonder how that sounded. Probably weird. Probably sounded real creepy. I hope so. Like some Unless... fucking old guy in your closet <laughs> watching you sleep. <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, this is Chamber of Chills. I don't know what episode. I don't think we keep. I don't care to keep track anymore, honestly. Yeah. But um. But yeah. What's up, man? Uh. <laughs> I mean, not that people watch us or uh, like, listen to this, <laughs> yeah. but like you know. I'm Paul. I'm Mike. Yeah, and welcome to Chamber of Chills. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that um that intro gave you chills, uh, but yeah. I doubt it. <clears throat> but yeah. anyway, what's up, man? <laughs> Not a lot. No. Yeah. Just chilling. Been in the movies lately. Yeah. We were talking about Doctor Sleep. Yeah. Uh, how uh, how it flopped. That's funny. I I really wanted to see it, but I had work, and mm-hmm. I was like, man. And then the week I worked all weekend too, and I was like too tired, so like I really didn't plan on. No, oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. you know, I didn't, you know, take the time to actually go to the movie theater. Mm-hmm. But um, but you just informed me that yeah, it, it kind of tanked, it kind of flopped at the box office. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. you know, um, I don't. We don't know what it is. I mean. Yeah, maybe we'll see it and be like, this fucking deserved to tank. Fuck that movie. <laughs> maybe. Or maybe I mean, we'll see it and be like, why, why did no one go see this movie? I don't know. It's 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 hard, man, and it's hard for people to get off their butts. To go to the movie theater nowadays, man. Yeah. You know, when was the last time you went to the movie theater? When was the last time? A couple months ago. What was the movie? It Chapter Two. Oh well, that was, I mean, an existing property. You yeah. Know? But Doctor Sleep is an existing property as well. Mm-hmm. You know, which, you know, that's another surprise because, I'm I'm sort of thinking of it of as like a, as like a The Shining sequel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Type of thing. That's why I'm like confused why people didn't go see it. Maybe. Not a lot of you know young people are aware of The Shining, but mm-hmm. I mean Stephen King pretty hot right now as far as movies concerned. You know yeah. it, those it movies made a shit ton of money. Oh, they made so much money. Yeah, you contributed. <laughs> yeah, well, my dad contributed. Okay, there you go. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I wonder why. I mean, not enough push for the for commercials or mm-hmm. you know. The budget was forty five million. Did take a lot. That's that's like chump change to like Warner Brothers right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, but then well, again, are they really struggling because Joker is like, was like the highest grossing fucking. I like, think maybe everyone blew their load on Joker. Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, they use their once a month movie pass, <laughs> right? But um, yeah, I read that uh, Joker was like one of the top grossing comic book movies ever. Yeah, and that's for um, and that doesn't mean like it made the most money out of every comic book movie ever, because mm-hmm. obviously Avengers made like a billion dollars, but um, but as far as like how much it took to make and how much it brought in, mm-hmm. as far as like you know, and that's pretty impressive, you know. Yeah. But I mean, that movie was like seventy million, and look how much money it's like nine hundred million. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, they also had Martin Scorsese behind the scenes. Oh, well, actually, that's not true. No. He backed out. He backed out. Yeah, he backed out. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, that was in the beginning. That was, like, the big selling point early yeah, on. Yeah, that was the reason why I was interested at first. Mm-hmm. But he he left. He left wow. to do the Irishman. All right. You know, that's, yeah, that was, yeah, he dropped out. So his name's not actually in the hmm. in the credits at all. But, uh, yeah, that surprised me, too. I barely found that out recently. Yeah. You know, but, yeah, I remember when the news did break, one of the biggest selling points was it was a Martin Scorsese film, mm-hmm. or produced Martin Scorsese yeah. film. So, but, yeah, man, he takes, did. you know. I think he still had a lot of influence over it. I mean, as far I mean, I think so. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, I haven't seen the movie. Me either. I I read I read about it, so mm-hmm. I know what happens. I know how it is. Mm-hmm. You know, shout out to Red Letter Media because mm-hmm. I watch them. That's <laughs> all the people I watch. You know, because I I trust them with movies. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it was very obviously taxi dri- like taxi driver esque. Mm-hmm. You know, there's obviously that influence. You know, and everybody knows the whole. You know. Marvel movies aren't cinema mm-hmm. debacle with Martin Scorsese even though he wrote he wrote he wrote for the New York Times recently a piece like uh, not defending himself but like giving a more elaborative just explaining yeah what explaining he meant. yeah explaining what he meant because everybody just took that whole that whole Marvel's not cinema mm-hmm. you know out of context type of thing you know and it's his right to have his opinion you yeah. know I don't know if I I mean I know what he's talking about I don't mm-hmm. know I mean, who's to say what's not cinema, what is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, what I know is that Martin Scorsese loves fucking movies, man. You know? <laughs> yeah, the guy kind of knows his shit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but that's actually a really good point, man. <laughs> so, yeah. 
But um, that's another episode for another time. But like one of the things that he <laughs> did mention was, you know, it's it's hard, you know, if it's if it's not a combo movie, that's pretty much what's pre- preoccupied the theater right now. Yeah, those are the only movies that make money, mm-hmm. and it's kind of you know, and it's kind of a shame, you know, but. It's a sad point because, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, name any mo- other movie that you would, Martin would call cinema or something like that. Or like, you know, mm-hmm. something a movie like The Lighthouse that I went to go see because mm-hmm. in the movie theater because it is different. It, it's, mm-hmm. you know, something that I'm not going to see in a theater that often. Yeah, there probably won't be another Lighthouse type film for another, who knows, five years. Yeah, and and how much money it made, I don't know. I could look mm-hmm. it up, but I mean, I mean, it's not breaking in. You know, yeah, it's not Marvel money. No, no, definitely not. Honestly, I don't think it raked in forty million. Mm-hmm. You know, didn't take that much to make though. You know, yeah. I think it was. I think it took like four million to make or whatever. Jeez. Yeah, but like you can make movies that cheap. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, you would think, right? Mm-hmm. Let me look it up just to, just in case. Yeah. The lighthouse. Hope the people could hear the keys on my pad. You know. We'll put uh, it in later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Budget. Uh, it took. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Hold on. You got another Halle Berry debacle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Fucking shot myself in the foot. <laughs> I don't know, man. You still could have still could have used, uh, used her, you know? Yeah, probably. User sounds a little... Oh, oh so I was right. Four million yeah. to make. Four million to make, and guess how much money it made? Nine million dollars. You know, which... I mean, it's a solid five million dollars. Yeah, solid five million dollars. But who knows if it did, you know? But I mean, I don't know if that's just box office in the states. So I don't know mm-hmm. how it did overseas or whatever, or if it is overseas. But anyway, the point is, mm-hmm. you know, we're not seeing a lot of movies like The Lighthouse right now. Yeah, comic book driven and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, man. Like it's and like I've talked to you about it before. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you feel about it, but you know. I do get a sense of like fatigue from these comic book movies, man. Just because I feel mm-hmm. like they are the same, the same concept every time, you know. Yeah, I've been pretty over superheroes for a while. Yeah, well, yeah, and it's kind of funny because, like, I mean, one of the, I mean, we'll talk about it later. One of the films that we're like pitching to each other, but I was reading a comic book, mm-hmm. you know, or you know, the recently, and I was thinking to myself, like, man, like. Actually, I just kind of forgot what I was. My point was I was gonna yeah. go. Actually, kind of just fucking left my mind. Actually, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, sorry about well, that. Fuck that thought. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, I mean, as far as um, well, okay, no, no, I, I you it found came, it. I found it. It came back. <laughs> um, Trains back on the rails. Yeah, back exactly. But I was reading uh, I was reading one of the comic books, and I was like, man, I was like, when did I stop reading superhero comics? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um. Because I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to lie, there's some superhero comics I do like. Batman has a lot of great stories. Mm-hmm. But, like, as far as, like, what I'm looking for, you know, like, mm-hmm. I think one of the most popular things I look for is, like, horror graphic novels. Yeah. Something, I try to find something different, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I was thinking, I was like, I can't remember the last comic book movie I read. You know what I mean? Like, superhero comic book, book movie, I, or comic book I read, rather. You know, mm-hmm. do you remember yours? Do you remember what last com- superhero comic you read? I did. It was, it was Moon Knight. Oh, Moon but Knight. that's he's still not like that's, a mainstream no. superhero. And that's I mean, he's like fucking D list. Yeah, and and kind of considered dark, right? Mm-hmm. I don't even think I finished it, but you weren't a fan, or you just like didn't get. It was cool. I had other stuff on the shelf. Yeah, that I was more interested in. I think I was reading Ferals at the same time. Oh, okay. Just uh, like a gnarly werewolf comic. Nothing wrong with that. I know yeah. you fucking you fuck with the werewolves, right? Oh yeah. But uh, it's oh, like half of the shit on my shelf. Yeah, it's funny you say Moonlight because that just that's gonna be made into a series. Disney Plus just dropped. Yeah. Yeah. So and I heard mm-hmm. it has like ten million people that signed up already. God damn. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Disney rules the world. Yeah. Which Marvel movies, by the way. <laughs> they fucking own everything. Yeah, they do. But I, uh, X Men animated series is on there. The oh, cartoon, right. yeah, and Gargoyles, I believe, is on there as well. Oh, shit. So I mean, I think they'll put new mutants on there. Oh man, just fucking send it out to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. Fu- I mean, we mentioned new mutants so many times, man. We don't know what the fuck happened to that. That movie, movie was finished like two years ago. I think more than that too. You know. Yeah. That's crazy. But anyway, back to the subject. We're still playing <laughs> producer. Yeah. But um, wh- last week was a little rough. Yeah. <laughs> 
the last one that we put up. Yeah. It was rough, you know? So For, here we are going to talk about making yeah, fucking well, comic book movies. Well, I mean, we <laughs> fucking came back. We, we, did, we did some research, though, this time. You know, yeah. we're not winging it anymore. I think that's commendable. <laughs> yeah. After uh, one of us shit the bed last week. <laughs> <laughs> you offered me a lot of stuff that I wasn't really... Yeah, interested in. I haven't in in our world, our small little world. I haven't made a film in in a while. Now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're you're. Just let me make something, please. <laughs> you're rolling though. You're rolling in the dough. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm killing it. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to start handing off projects to you. Yeah. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> well, <clears throat> one of the projects that you that was a winner because we do choose the best out of mm-hmm. all of you know the ones that were pitched to us, and we would you know come back this week and. Mm-hmm give a little bit more of ideas that we had for it yeah. and mine was you know tomb of dracula yeah like the one good pitch i gave you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was actually cool i was really excited for tomb of dracula so <laughs> and uh i did so much research on the other projects i really didn't really like get too deep into this one mm-hmm. you know i didn't have time but i mean it would be fascinating because like in the climate we, we live in with movies if people would go see a a marvel dracula movie yeah. you know that'd be interesting right mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't know. But mine wouldn't be Marvel. wouldn't be, you know, produced by Marvel. It's my mm-hmm. own little take to it. But, um, in my, like, I think I would go for, um, obviously, a more dark tone. Mm-hmm. I believe, like, I, I, it's funny because, like, one of the plans I had for it was, like, it opened up in a, in a dark, you know, dark, windy atmosphere, obviously. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a scene where, like, it starts off with a, a woman about to be raped by some dude. Oh, shit. But... Dracula straight set. to the R rating. Yeah, big time. Oh yeah, this one's yeah, it's it's gonna get gr- it's gonna get gruesome. But yeah. she doesn't get raped. Dracula saves her. All right. Yeah, Dracula oh, saves good her. Good guy, Dracula. You say that. Yeah. But he ends up take turning her into a one of her. You know, her uh, his one of his concubines. He, pretty much. Yes. He, he Fuck tur- it. yeah he turns her into a vampire. <laughs> so I kind of like you know after it's, I just want to you know have this contrast of like mm-hmm. like ooh he saves her. But then he fucking takes her life. He, yeah. you know, he turns her into a fucking vampire. Yeah, no, he was just claiming her for his own. Yeah, claiming her for his own. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and I was reading some two of Dracula mm-hmm. too because I own uh, Valiant two of it, and I, I love his his dialogue to himself that he mm-hmm. has because because he's obviously he despised the human race, yeah. and one of the like one, it's one of the most random things happened in the comics. He goes mm-hmm. to a boxing event. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking okay. <laughs> this is the book. I would. I don't know if I would put it in in my version of the movie, mm-hmm. but um, but there's dialogue where he like looking at the boxers destroy each other and mm-hmm. kill each other, essentially not literally, but you know they're beating the shit out of each other, right? Yeah. And he's kind of going on this 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 long dialogue in his head where like like humanity like this like is supposed to like like on the surface they despise violence, but they're promoting it here for mm-hmm. people to watch and see. But you know in the but when they see my violence, they, you know, they say yuck and, you know, they try to drive a stake through my heart type of thing, you know, yeah. I mean, like Dracula's, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting contrast, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just want to play a little bit with that. And then, mm-hmm. uh, obviously some villains. I want to have, um, um, uh, the werewolf by night comic series right. to get involved as well. Mm-hmm. And blade as well. Nice. So, and honestly, I'm not gonna like, honestly, I, I wouldn't write, and I put it in my notes, like, I wouldn't write these guys as good guys, bad guys. I would just write how they are and just, like, see, see who the audience fucking yeah. roots for towards the end. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. make people can make, choose their sides. Yeah. You could choose so your side. So it's more of, like, a it's like a mafia turf war rather than Pretty much, cops yeah. and robbers. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. There's no good guy, bad guy. Mm-hmm. Even in the comic that I was reading, people were looking at Blade as, like, you know, as a, you know, like he doesn't care about you know all he does care about is getting the job done and that's killing vampires. Mm-hmm. He's he doesn't really care about the people that you know that is like that Dracula has is killing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's just there to do a job. You know what yeah. I mean? And, you know, I don't think people would you know care for that a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? Is it seventies Blade or nineties Blade? Oh, those good. are two that completely is, different guys. Honestly, man, I'm going seventies Blade. Yeah, yeah, nice. Afro everything. <laughs> yes, I'm going full. You know. Again, this is my this is my movie. Yeah. It's gonna be you know. It's got that jive talk. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, big time. <laughs> Look like he's going to a disco. Yeah, he's got big the fucking time. goggles and well, shit. Well, I wouldn't go that far, <laughs> but he is gonna have a has like a, a like a like a like a gun belt, but with stakes. Yeah, and stuff and shit, and shit like right. that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's gonna have a it's gonna have a really fun vibe to it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean. 
Definitely have that 80s theme. Mm-hmm. 80s, think 80s, 70s uh, Dracula movie, but the Wolfman and Blade are, yeah, Turf War. Exactly right. what you said, yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting things, you know? Yeah. But I at the same it. time, but I mean, at the end of the day, Dracula is the main person that we're focusing on. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, him questioning humanity and going mm-hmm. against humanity and finding everything that, you know, disgusts him and, you know, why he's, you know, why it hurts to live as well so mm-hmm. long. But, um, but yeah, that's all I got for my Tomb of Dracula, my, yeah. my theme, you know. Are you keeping Marshala as uh, as Blade? <laughs> well, that'd be cool to see, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, I haven't really thought about casting, honestly. No? No, no, no. I mean, but I mean, you just mentioned Marshal Ali. Fuck yeah. yeah. I mean, if I could put him in anything. Yeah, fuck yeah. He Jaws, he played the shark. <laughs> fucking, you could play Jesus if you wanted. Yeah, there you go. Fuck yeah. Definitely my favorite actor working today, yeah. by the way. He's killing everything he does. But, okay. um, <clears throat> what was it? Uh-huh. but yeah, I don't, yeah, never, never thought about casting. Yeah. Didn't go deep into casting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely I want Marshal Ali to do anything. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, from what I, from what you told me, you have a lot of casting for your. That's like most of what i did <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny yeah but so your winner of last week i mean i gave you what did i give you i gave you wolf among us you gave me a fucking feast yeah i did i yeah. I, I, I went out laughing bro <laughs> i gave you bangers yeah you know but uh um, i gave my, you mash <laughs> yeah <laughs> but two of my favorite ones that i did give you that i knew you were gonna have a lot of fun with was mm-hmm. um was Wolf Among Us and Spawn. Yeah. You chose Spawn. Yeah, it was a real tough choice. It was tough because I, cause I, I told you before we recorded, I replayed Wolf Among Us and it was really yeah. fun. And I was like, man, I was like, do some really cool, fun stuff with this one. Mm-hmm. But I knew deep down in your, in your dark heart, <laughs> Mike, you were going to choose Spawn. Yeah. Which I don't blame you. Who wouldn't take Spawn, I think. Mm-hmm. You know? But yeah. What take did you bring to Spawn or cast? All right. I guess I'll go through my casting first. Yeah, let's go. All right. Spawn. All right. Get him out the way. The big honcho. Who, yeah. Who's it going to be? Who, right. who The news breaking is going to be on the internet, Twitter. Everybody's going to buzz about it. Who is it going to be? Keith David is voicing Spawn. That's right. You did You get keep that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have someone else in the suit. A little bit of CGI touching up. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. You know, the like glowing eyes, the green of blood. Of course, right? Where... The first Spawn movie in 97, there was, like, virtually everything almost. Well, yeah. almost everything was CGI, right? Just about, yeah. Yeah, just about. <laughs> right. Continue. Yeah. All right. So, the Violator is going to be one of the main big bads Okay, the big movie. bads. Okay, I'm curious. John Leguizamo filled some big shoes, man. Yeah. All right. This this is probably one of my favorite castings. Oh, really? So you, I'm curious how, to see what you think. How long How long did it take you to come up with this, by the way? This Violator. This Violator took me like 20 minutes okay. and then i got it right and it's like oh shit that's that's good okay give it to me man all right the violator is paul giamatti oh wow yeah interesting mm-hmm. interesting i like it mm-hmm. it's a, it's kind of like a yeah man i mean now that i'm thinking yeah you gotta let it sit with me for a second yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't make sense at first <laughs> right yeah. but the more i'm thinking about it i was like yeah he could pull it off yeah i mean but i mean He's one of those actors that could probably pull anything off, yeah. so that's why it's perfect. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's really tough because like I don't know who I would cast honestly. Yeah, I would have been like, can we bring back John Leguizamo? <laughs> but I mean, I'm with it. Yeah, like yeah, let it sit with you. Mm-hmm. I think people will come around to it. They'd be interested. They'd be mm-hmm. like, color me intrigued. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. The guy from Sideways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or the youngsters know him probably from Straight Outta Compton. Yeah. You know, I don't know what movie I would. I would pin him in as like one of my favorite performances yeah. probably sideways i love mm-hmm. sideways a lot yeah. um what else man one of the things that he was in that helped me like solidify Stamped him it. was he played that creepy fucking orangutan in uh, <laughs> planet of the apes that's right oh wow that is true man yeah, yeah. it's like all right that, wow change the prosthetic a that's, little bit that's a weird correlation but yeah that's yeah. true i can see that now mm-hmm well, good. Any anybody else? Oh, there's so many people. <laughs> I have uh, J.K. Simmons as Police Chief Banks. Okay, cool. I mean, dude, hey, I'll watch J.K. Simmons do anything, yeah. bro. Honestly, that's I almost feel guy. bad giving him like a small role. But I mean, I'm sure he'll. I'm I mean, sure this is he... dream casting. This but, half I mean, these I'm people sh- aren't gonna. Even if it's in a small movie. role, I'm sure he's gonna knock it out of the park. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> people will remember him. Like you, like I feel like that's his thing. Like you know, yeah. no matter if it's big or small, he he. His part's always going to be remembered. Yeah. Um, I had Thomas Jane in there as 
the homeless man. Thomas as, Jane, huh? Yeah. As one of the homeless dudes that is like hanging out with Spawn. Yeah, interesting. He's not the main homeless dude who used to be like the big deal, right? Or is he like kind of. Yeah, he's kind the, of. Yeah, yeah, okay, for sure. Okay. He's like Spawn's Spawn's buddy. Okay, cool. And then I have You gonna have a be- beard on him or what? A little bit, a little scruff, a little dirty. Yeah, really dirty scruff. Yeah. Messy hair. Yeah. Crazy Thomas Jane. <laughs> Who doesn't love Crazy Thomas Jane, right? Yeah. Okay. Any, anybody else? Um, I have uh, Sam and Twitch, the detectives. <laughs> okay, you're, they're going to be in there. Yeah. Who you got? Who you got? And okay, by the way, Jeremy Renner was cast. It's, it's not Jeremy Renner. Okay, who do you got? I have David Harbour and mm-hmm. Alan Tudyk. Okay. Good. Really good picks. Yeah. I can see that. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Damn, got quite a cast in your hands. Yeah, and uh, I I brought I brought Halle Berry back. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? Is she playing Wanda? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I thought about it. I was like, oh, maybe I blew my Halle Berry load too early. <laughs> Should have saved her for this. A small Who, part. What was she supposed to be last week? She was gonna be an alien. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she was gonna be the. She was the not Ripley. The not Ripley. Yeah. Yeah. That's what probably people would say. Fucking I mean... Riley or some <laughs> some bullshit. <laughs> Riley. Not Ripley. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so Wanda, alrighty. Yeah. And then the last casting. Little girl. Was... <laughs> no. No. It's okay. me. I'm the little <laughs> girl. <laughs> um this one I think you're really gonna like. Okay, let me see. Here I have go. Idris Elba as Chapel. Chap oh wow. He's gonna be Oh, so he's the He's gonna be the other the big bad. The big bad, okay. Yeah. Fuck yeah, alright. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I mean I would have went for the easy one. I would have put Idris Elba as spawn. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think I he... thought about it. <laughs> I, I really? did. You're like Aki David. It's like, oh man, because but you're just a sucker for the animated show. I aren't am. You? I really am. I don't blame you. But yeah, Keith David's voice is just so. I mean, he's fucking coming back to play Spawn in the Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So I mean, of course, I don't blame you. Yeah. But yeah. But if I couldn't get him, Idris Elba would be right there. If the studio f- had to fight you and tell you like, no, it has to be an actor, you would have to be like, fine, to give me Idris. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Or I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> but I'd, I'd probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't think it would be bad. I think people would be fucking down for that. Yeah. You know, I think... Honestly, I think it's I think it's a lot better than Jamie Foxx. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Jamie's great, but I don't think he's Spawn. No? Okay. Not in my book. That's, 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 a fair, that's a fair critique, you know? But to be fair, he's barely in Todd McFarlane's movie. Yeah, supposedly. yeah. Supposedly. Oh, really? Yeah. He's going to be like a... He's like, like the... He's like the shark from Jaws. <laughs> you know, you really see him, right? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We'll see. We'll see if it gets made, which I think it probably will now that Joker really succeeded. So yeah, maybe a little rate, rated our comic books could could happen. Yeah. So um, but yeah, anything else that you want to add? Oh, story man. or like you know? I have a little bit of the story. Tell me a little bit of the story, yeah. man. So most of the story is going to be Spawn. My fucking brain just died. <laughs> we don't have cameras yet, but you could see it on my face. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck was it? Uh, but um, so a lot of it is going to be Spawn's conflict with the Violator, with the the, Vi- Vi- the Violator egging him on, telling him to kill people right. and stuff. Okay, all right. And Spawn not knowing who he is or why he's doing this. Thing. Yeah. So you're not going to show the origin, right? Of why he's got there? No, that's gone. Close right? to no remember, origin. Yeah, I remember you. Mem- you mentioned it last week, right? Yeah. No origin. There okay. will be. A little bit of it coming back later in the movie, okay. where he starts to remember. Wanda. He remembers Wanda. He's like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. But that's not till like the third act of the movie where he's fighting Chapel. Oh, okay. Because Chapel, for those who don't know, is his buddy from war who yeah. actually fucking killed him. Yeah. Let me. See. I want. I want to look up some um, some images of him. Actually. He looks fucking dope. He's a buff ass dude with a white skull painted on his face. Oh man! Yeah. Damn. Kind of like a flamethrower and shit. Damn. Oh, man, that, that's pretty good right there. Mm-hmm. I see, yeah. If you guys want to know what Chapel looks like, type in Spawn Chapel. And, yeah, it has a, he has like a he has like a little voodoo vibe to him in a little bit, but yeah. like he's just a killing machine, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's he's pretty badass. Yeah, I would love to see um, Idris Elba as that. Mm-hmm. That would be pretty fucking dope. Yeah, I think you got a winner, bro. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, those were our two two winners from last week. I'm really curious of who's gonna do, what's going to be the winner for our, for this week. For this week, you yeah. know, I think we got a lot of bangers. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess 
Who do who who wants to go first? You want to flip a coin or something or what? There actually is a coin. <laughs> oh wow, there is. Look at yeah. that. All right, so uh, let's flip it. Uh, do you want to be heads or tails? It doesn't matter to me. Okay, so I'll be tails. You'll be heads. Let's right. see who goes first. I tried to flick it past the mic. <laughs> did we did we catch it? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not, but we have tails. Tails? So that means I go first. All right. So you could uh, go ahead and send me down, man. Where's All right. the... All right, producer. Pitch right. me a movie. I'm a filmmaker. All right. Tomb of Dracula was great. We want to see what you'll do with this property. Okay. We want you to do a Swamp Thing movie. Oh, Swamp Thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All righty. <clears throat> I would definitely do Swamp Thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I... I Wrote notes about it. I can't tell you like a certain story I would give it, mm -hmm. but I would definitely give it. would be heavy on narration. Yeah, honestly, like it'd be a lot of narration because because I don't like I I wouldn't want people to see like Swamp Thing talk. You know? Yeah, it would look weird. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I I don't know how the DC show was, but I mean I I I didn't watch it. I didn't care. I mean they made it their own thing. Good for them. Kudos. Whatever. It got canceled, unfortunately. Not because of the quality, but because of some business thing, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, really unfortunate circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, but hopefully I'll get to check it out in the future because I Swamp Thing is one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be very heavy narration driven. It would be very dark, yeah. what I would do with it, honestly. Like, um, like Anton Ar Arcane would be the villain. For mm -hmm. those who don't know, Anton Arcane, he's a very, he's a very, he's like, he's basically like, Swamp Thing's Joker, basically, to what mm -hmm. Batman is to Joker. You know, his polar opposite, you know? <clears throat> yeah, you showed me pictures of him before. Yeah, he, yeah how He's would like you describe... He's like a fucked up monkey guy. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I, would, I was going to... He's got, like, big teeth and shit. Yeah, like, imagine, like, what was the movie that Jason's, Jason's face, part two, with the bag, and he lifts his face? Oh, yeah, he's he all looks all like, fucked up looking. Yeah, but his body was, like, a hairless orangutan. Mm -hmm. Very scary looking. You know, like, a very, like, uh, a troglodyte caveman type of looking yeah. monster monster thing but he used to be human mm -hmm. that's the thing the reason why you have to have those two you know because Swamp Thing had his humanity taken away from him while Arcane basically threw his way his, threw his away deliberately yeah you know it's his polar opposite and mm -hmm. you know it's basically like you know I'd probably do this thing where like Anton would probably want Swamp Thing's body in exchange, you know, in his exchange he would turn to human, but obviously he would use Swamp Thing's body for, you know, evil, yeah. you know, and Swamp Thing would probably get a get a whiff of, you know, his plan, and, you know, mm -hmm. they would fucking fight it out, you know what I mean? Imagine a fucking, a fucking Swamp Thing, a fucking monstrous piece of nature going mm -hmm. up, going up against this fucking, you know, this, this zombie looking fucking fucking bigfoot like creature you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it'd be freaky i think you know yeah it's almost like man versus nature yeah big time you know what i mean or like mm -hmm. or man's atrocity you know mm -hmm. man's atrocity versus nature you know what i mean because yeah. yeah i think one of the one of the like story arcs i don't know if it's new 52 swamp thing but like one of the ways that anton throws away his his humanity is like he finds this rabbit full of maggots on the ground mm -hmm. and he eats it Nice. And he eats it, yeah. And he's, it's he, no baby, but that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, that's right. Hey, I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know if it beats your your baby eating heels have eyes movie, yeah. but yeah, imagine that. Like I can see, like, <laughs> but, but when I read that, I was like, man, mm -hmm. imagine like an actor just like just grabbing this fake. Yeah, like I could like on camera, I could yeah. see it being like shocking a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It'll definitely shock some people. Yeah, but yeah, it'll definitely be a dark movie. I'll tell I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. And if you. Yeah, look up pictures of Anton Arcane on Google, and you'll see like how horrifically, mm -hmm. like, like scary looking yeah. he is. You know, or if we have time, we could throw him in there. Like a picture of him. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah we should do that in one yeah. of these videos, right? Yeah, give us some time. You know, yeah, if we end early. Save their Google searches. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You don't have to do that. We could just do it for you. Yeah. How about that? But yeah, but yeah, that's all I got for Swamp Thing. I mean, I would make it very dark, mm -hmm. ambient. I honestly, in a real, in a reality, if I were to do that, I would just dive into comics yeah. for like two months straight and just like try to figure out the best story. And just my apologies, that was very rude of me. <laughs> I'm gonna go put that on mute. Actually, we've had a tragedy. Yes, <laughs> it says we've turned on storage sense. I don't know what that means. Computer. No, not the storage sense. <laughs> I don't Anything know what that means. but the storage sense. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about what the, what that means. My computer, but whatever.
That's all I, I got. It swamp died. Thing. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Alrighty. So for you, this is probably the you know, I I gave this to you because I was trying to find something. Because I think afterwards we were trying to talk to each other like, hey, let's, let's bring some comics that we or like some stuff that we were not familiar with. Yeah, and this comic. Mm-hmm had a very little information you couldn't really do much with it yeah huh? there's like one paragraph on the wiki <laughs> yeah there really was i'm looking at it right now yeah i'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll say it you know thank you i pitch you that <laughs> yeah well consider a payback you son yeah. of a bitch <laughs> for last week but i, I think i, gave I you, deserve this <laughs> i gave you quite a quite a few bangers though afterwards though yeah yeah definitely but um it's called the atheist Mm-hmm. I think Image Comics was the publisher. Yeah, Image yeah, Comics. Image. So I guess I'm reading the wiki here. The storyline resol- revolves around present-day humans that are having their bodies being possessed by souls from hell, similar to possessions of the 1950s horror movie, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the souls from hell begin an extreme hedonist- hedon- hedonistic? hedonistic. I was going to say that, but I don't know, you know. That was the right word. Yeah. Maybe I should just said malicious. A malicious lifestyle <laughs> that includes bra- raves, drugs, self-mutilation, murder, and other violence. The, pose- the possessed bodies then start congregating in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And Antoine Sharp is the, our protagonist who has the nickname The Atheist. Not for a lack of religious belief, but because Sharp has an uncompromising brand of logic. Sharp is independently contracted by the United States government to evaluate the bizarre events caused by the souls from hell possessing living human bodies. Mike. It sounds badass. It does sound badass, right? I would right? definitely do this movie. Really? Okay, yeah. okay cool. Because I, cause I was worried because, yeah, like mm-hmm. like you said, there's not a lot of information. But mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, I was like, hopefully Mike could do his own little spin and do some things yeah, with it. You know what I mean? there's still a lot here. Yeah, big time. Mm-hmm. I would like to read it. I want to, like... Yeah. Go into Comixology, see if I could buy issue one and mm-hmm. see what's up, you know? Yeah. You know, but as there... Yeah, you know, I would definitely have to read it. Yeah, yeah big, <laughs> yeah. Time, big time. We're but taking yeah. the name and yeah. fucking off. Yeah, <laughs> but what would you do with it if I were to pitch you that movie? Mm-hmm. Like, let's say I'm a producer and I just told you that. So you're doing the movie? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Tell yeah. me what you got. It's going to start off slow. Slow, huh? Yeah. Slow burn. Yeah, our our protagonist Antoine, who I would like to be played by Tony Todd. Oh wow, he, I he mean, looks he looks just like the picture. Yeah, if there's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll put a picture of uh, the atheist cover yeah. of the comic. Yeah, he looks exactly like Tony Todd. Yeah, it's I, crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if they used Tony Todd as a model. Yeah, well, job. I mean, because it's funny you said that because that's yeah. the first image I had in my head when I first saw it. Yeah, but it looks like Tony Todd. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Tony Todd. For those who don't know, the fucking Candy Man. Yeah, fucking amazing. Oh, but anyway, anyway, yeah. So it would be Tony Todd, who's this sort of a paranormal detective. Right, sort of. Possibly, mm-hmm. d- depending on how the comic goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't read the comic, but yeah. we are just going off solely on synopsis alone. Yeah. Continue. So there would be like an outbreak of raves. Oh, and shit. People like starting partying and stuff. Yeah. And cops trying to shut it down. And then things would progressively get more and more violent. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how I would gradual, introduce... Like a gradual build to like... Yeah. Like crazy, it gets crazier and crazier. Yeah, like first people are partying, then everyone's doing drugs, mm. then everyone's just fucking everywhere. Oh, man. And then people like start mutilating Sex. themselves oh, and killing each other. Debauchery. Yeah. <laughs> so it starts off light and Sounds just gets pretty crazy already. worse and worse. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. That sounds intense. Obviously hard R, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I think every movie we're going to do is going to be hard R, huh? I don't think we're ever going to not do a hard R movie. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how. Yeah, what, I mean, it's going to be history once we find a movie that, like, yeah, we don't have to do R for We should this do one. that next week. Have to pitch something PG. Oh, man. <laughs> I would have a tough time, honestly. Me too. Can't have <laughs> fucking we're, yeah. dinosaurs from Land Before Time eat a baby. <laughs> <laughs> we're sick bastards. Yeah. But, um,. But yeah, man. Uh, okay, it sounds for fucking dope. I mean, mm-hmm. From the first little information I had on it, you know. Yeah. That's how creepy would it be if we read the comic and it was exactly like that? Oh man, that, that would be really creepy. <laughs> like, fuck, did I write this? <laughs> I'm this a, me from the future. I'm curious. I'm curious about it though. Yeah. You know, obviously I had to do my own research for my own stuff, but mm-hmm. like I was really fascinated by it. I was like, yeah. oh, let me check it out. But um, maybe there's a sex cult in there. I fucking hope so. Yeah. I fucking love cults. 
And sex cult? Shit, jeez. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cult summons demons. Something fucks up. They yeah. possess everyone. Let's bring it. Let's do it. Shit goes sideways. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's about all I got. For sure, man. Next one. Next one. Yeah. Yeah, so you're pitching me my second one now. Yeah. All right. So, everyone loved Swamp Thing. And of kicked course. Ass. <laughs> Cause it's a fucking Swamp Thing. Yeah, he doesn't love Swamp Thing. Yeah. All right. So we're coming at you with another comic book property. Sweet. This one has never been adapted yet. Is it my dream? This is my dream role. Is my dream. It is. My dream. Yeah. Yeah. This one almost felt like cheating. Yeah, it really was. Once yeah. you, you mentioned that, I was like, I was like, you could do better than this. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, how can I not not do yeah, it? You know. No, this is my apology for last <laughs> it week. It really is your apology yeah. letter to me. All right. So we want you to do Black Hole. Yes, Black Hole, ladies and gentlemen, Black mm-hmm. Hole by Charles Burns is literally my favorite comic book of all time. Mm-hmm. You know. I, um, so for those who don't know, I mean, I guess we could read, read some synopsis I could bring up here mm-hmm. for you. But I mean, <clears throat> it was released in like 2005, the comic book, mm-hmm. by Pantheon Book, by Pantheon Comics, or no, no, just Pantheon Books. The story deals with the aftermath of a sexually transmitted disease that causes grotesque mut- mutations in teenagers. Bur- and you know Charles Burns, who's um, who wrote the comic, he he wrote and did the art as well. Um, you know, he said that you know mutations can be in the in the in the book can be read as a metaphor for adolescence, sexual awakening, and the transitions into adulthood, kind of. Right. You know, um, it's a very dark mm-hmm. comic. Uh, it's yeah. it deals with these young kids, you know, experimenting with sex and drugs and mm-hmm. alcohol and stuff. You know, but there's a little twist of romance in there as well. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's the silver lining, I would say. Yeah, big time. <laughs> but yeah, there's like a yeah these kids get mutated in pretty like fucked up ways yeah i think one of the i think but you could do something so creepy with this this project mm-hmm. you know um i think they're yeah one of the scenes there i mean i say scenes but you know mm-hmm. i would ov- obviously put this in the movie in the movie mm-hmm. but like one of the one of the parts of the comic the kids are like you know doing you know drinking in the forest or whatever and yeah. they find like skin shedded skin from like a human like a human body mm-hmm. and it looks super creepy you know yeah and for though you know i hope i'm not trying to make this into like a promoting the fucking comic but you know for those who haven't read it fucking read it bro oh definitely yeah it's mm-hmm. it's i remember when i let you borrow it i want i was, I was like curious <laughs> how you're gonna like take to it you know yeah i like i read a little bit one day and a little bit the next and i fucking finished it the third day <laughs> yeah it's a page turner for sure yeah it's a thick ass book too. it really is yeah but like It'd be quick. It's quick to read, you know. Yeah. It's a cute page turner. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm sucking. I'm sucking its dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, <clears throat> but yeah, I would definitely. Honestly, I don't. I've been trying to think about like what would I? I didn't write any notes on it. I'm just thinking in my head about it the entire time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I was like, how would I do this? Like, I actually thought about like bring it because like it takes place in like late '60s, early '70s. Yeah. But I'm kind of thinking like 2003, 2002, yeah. 2001 for me modernize it a little bit yeah just yeah just a tad Mm -hmm. you know because that for me was like you know i I remember those days and for some reason i could see it taking place around Mm -hmm. there you know obviously have the same story and stuff but yeah i mean and it's i I might get an nc-17 for this one man yeah it's i mean mean, you've read it it's really heavily sexualized yeah well there's there's a scene i want to ask you about sure how you're gonna do it oh man tell me which scene in particular it's personally my favorite scene <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see how i mean if the baby if the baby eating wasn't you know enough yeah. to think mike is a sick fuck let's find out a little more what your favorite scene right. black hole is. so there's this scene where this guy's at a party mm-hmm. and he goes downstairs he's not supposed to go downstairs no he's not and he goes into this room and there's just this chick in there mm-hmm. and he starts talking to the chick and yes. whatever and they end up hooking up mm-hmm. so at this time, our main character has not had sex. He doesn't have the STD at all. No. The girl does. Yes. She has a fucking tail. Yeah, a tail. And there's one panel I remember very specifically mm-hmm. where he's hitting it doggy style. Yes, and the tail Holding like, the tail. Yes. And she's telling him to pull on it. Yeah. And, and he I rips it, it off. Comes off. It fucking comes off. It's like a lizard. It's like a lizard yeah, tail. Yeah, it's like a lizard tail. It's like a lizard tail. Yeah, and for those who are like have no... <laughs> Are listening to this is like are probably like what the fuck? Yeah, but it made me want it made me want to find a chick with a tail. <laughs> I was like, I, I could finish that, now, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, man. 
but uh yeah that has happened <laughs> and there's actually like a yeah does he sees her like before type you know as well and he kind of yeah. like sees her with the tail before mm-hmm. and he actually has like a fascination towards it where it's like it kind of turns him on for some reason i can see that reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah obviously maybe mike will be my fucking yeah, star yeah. of the movie <laughs> but yeah it's um i'm showing it all man yeah tail and all nice back shots <laughs> You're gonna be very happy with it. Yeah. Uh, they're, during the premiere, I'm gonna be looking at you. I'm like, "Where's Mike during this scene?" You'd be fucking grinning. <laughs> he's just laughing. Everybody in the the in the movie is just like, "Oh my god!" Everyone's shocked. And I, I, Mike Mike has this <laughs> giant smile on his face, smiling like a pervert, <laughs> like fucking Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, I mean, I, I know I didn't give much on the on the like how I would do it, but I mean, mm-hmm. I would definitely go close to the book. Yeah, and it's kind of weird. I, I I've obviously because like. For those who don't know, mm-hmm. it's actually presented black and white. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, because, too, because there's some, like, trippy scenes where, like, you know, where the kids are on, like, drugs and getting high, and they're, like, there's, mm-hmm. like, psychedelic, like, vibe to it as well in the mm-hmm. in the art, but, like, it's black and white, and when you think psychedelic, you think... You think fucking rainbows. Yeah, you think rainbows and fucking, you know, colored dye shirts or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's black and white. Yeah. And it's really... Yeah, it's really hypnotic, some of these mm-hmm. pages. And, um... Yeah, and for those, you know, make sure you're an adult because this is, <laughs> this is very, it's a very, you know, a lot of sex in this, mm-hmm. in the book. Nah, maybe not a lot, but, you know, when it is happening, it's very well drawn, Charles yeah. Burns. <laughs> but yeah, I would try to make mm-hmm. it as close as the comic as possible. Mm-hmm. But just the only theme would change would be the time, yeah. modernize it, you know? Because <clears throat> I was thinking to myself, I was like, what if this is like, what if, because like, one thing that I wasn't a fan of, I mean, I was and I wasn't. It was a guilty mm-hmm. pleasure of mine. But movies from those time periods, like, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, I was like, it sucks. Because, like, half of these movies that took place during this time, like, really sucked, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of horror movies, you know, that were just cheesy, you know, just bad Jennifer Love Hewitt <laughs> movies, you know? No, no offense. No, she was hot. Oh, yeah, she's a beautiful woman, but the movie stunk. Yeah. You know, and... And I was always told myself, like, man, like, you know, I watch those movies now, so I was like, it would be my, it would be my kind of love letter to the 2000 horror movies, but like, yeah. make them quality. You know what I mean? Make yeah. them quality, make them good, and make it dark and just gritty and make it, you know, make it serious as possible mm-hmm. and just, you know, have a little, challenge myself with a little bit of romance, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, have this twisted fucking dark thing happening. Yeah. Practical effects? Of course. Yes, practical. <laughs> I mean, do we even have to ask at this point? Of course, point? yeah, absolutely. I remember there's one there's one scene where like uh, a guy has a has a second mouth on his throat, yeah, and his little tongue, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm practical effect in that <laughs> shit. And there's a scene where like, at first it kind of like throws the chick off in the book, yeah, and she's like, oh wow, she's like, kind of grossed out a little yeah, bit at first, but she really likes it. As yeah, as, as time goes on, she fucking tongues that fucking that fucking mouth, bro. Yeah. He I'm, fucking loves it. Best believe I'm fucking showing that too. <laughs> Practical effects and all. Yeah. And there's gonna be a scene where like when 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 her mouth like it's gonna be a close up and mm-hmm. it's gonna be a string of saliva. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing it all, bro. Yeah. This is gonna be the movie teenage boys show their friends. Oh yeah, like you like check show. this shit out. This is <laughs> fucked <really> up. Is. <laughs> and that honestly, that's honestly I take pride in that. Yeah. I would take pride in that. It's going to be our generation's American Pie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but dark and serious. Yeah. But anyway, but I mean, I say dark and serious. There's quite a bit of humor in it as well. Yeah. That I wouldn't want to shy away from. But anyway. But there's also like murder. Oh, yeah, stuff. big time. Oh, big time, yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's all I got. I mean, I think I just pretty much sold the promotion for the book more than, more than this, the, the movie. But I mean, yeah. I don't give a fuck, honestly. Check it out. I mm-hmm. love that book. It's one of my favorite reads of all time. Yeah. And that's from like novels and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Change it up to you. Oh, man. I got to fucking follow that. <laughs> I know, right? So the second one that I'm giving you is a movie that came out. I wanted to, I wanted to get one movie in there. Yeah. One movie in there. And it's kind of well, it's kind of forgotten, but it took $2 million, $2 million to make. And one of the, one of the best de- de- uh, directors of our time, I think, mm-hmm. Danny Boyle directed it. Now they're bringing you back. They're like, hey, man. They really want this property to come back mm-hmm. as its own. We think you would, you would shine with the with the subject matter. All right. It's kind of a challenge though, because mm-hmm. we're gonna put a little, little twist on it with the whole. Because uh, you know this is. I think this might be different from what we've offered you and what you you know. And this is yeah personally okay. too. So 
it's a movie called Shallow Grave. And mm-hmm. for those who don't know, Shallow Grave had a young Ewan McGregor. Yeah. A very young Ewan McGregor. This movie came out in 1995. Mm-hmm. But it's about an accountant named David and a doctor named Juliet and a journalist named Alex. Alex is played by Ewan McGregor. And uh, they're searching for a fourth roommate for their third trendy flat. <clears throat> they settle on an, a, the aloof Hugo, played by Keith Allen. However, they soon find Hugo dead, dead of a drug overdose. Bes- and, you know, he's <clears throat> he's next to, like, a sum of large cash. Yeah. Next to, you know, his body's found with cash. And after for some de- deliberation, the three others decide to keep the money and to dismember and bury Hugo's body, which soon each roommate starts thinking about keeping all the money by scamming each other. Yeah. So it'd be it'd be different, I think, for it you. Would. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. why I gave it to you. Yeah. It's honestly it's been on the, you know, a movie list watch list and I was like, Oh yeah, I really want to see it. Yeah. So I want to know, you know, what you yeah. would do with it. So I'm I've really never curious. seen this movie. Yeah, you never did. I did watch the trailer for it. Yes. Which pretty it sums it up pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big time it does. So it, it's the classic moral conundrum yeah. of you find a case with a million dollars, what do you do? Yeah, big time. So I think I would go straight black comedy with this one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Really? Okay. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's your thing. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. Tell me about it, man. I don't know if it would be them looking for a new roommate. Oh, okay. I, I'd probably change that part up a little bit. Oh, yeah? But I do really like the idea of you have these three friends mm-hmm. some new person comes into their life and fucking dies and then they find a shitload of money and what, oh, do, yeah. you, what do you do mm-hmm. I would still have them fucking dismember him oh, of course yeah. right and fucking stuff in trash bags and how come I thought how something. come I thought you were going to take to that really well like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean really it's a selling point yeah it really is um, I think I would have a bit in there mm-hmm where one of the guys accidentally eats a little a little bit of them. <laughs> Whoa! Like, they're chopping them up, and they don't have anywhere to put them, so they put them, like, in the fridge. Okay. And one of the guys accidentally, like, eats, like, a little piece of leg or something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> he forgets that they're there? Yeah. Damn. Damn, they're going full. I think that would be pretty funny. It would be pretty funny in a dark way. Yeah. Interesting stuff, It's like man. mixing his pasta, and there's a fucking toe in there or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, how the fuck, you fucking assholes? That reminds me of a scary story to tell in the dark. Yeah. yeah. There's actually a scene where he, he eats a toe. And then really? Like, yeah. Wow. Way to go, Guillermo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't know you had it in you. Yeah. Well, I mean, he produced I did, it. But... He, yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Of course. He produced it. He didn't direct it. But, you know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Continue. Anything else you want to bring to Shallow Grave? I, I would kind of try to focus on, like, the friends betraying each other mm-hmm. a little okay. bit. I'm guessing not, this is not going to have a happy ending. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Of course not. No. It's a black comedy. Why would it end happy? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, right. I feel everyone dies. <laughs> oh, of course, right. Oh, or maybe the last guy uh-huh. to survive runs into another group of friends mm. with the fucking cash, and then he dies. So it all fucking starts over again. Oh, wow. I like that. I think that. that'd be cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I hope we get to watch this movie together someday. Yeah. Because um, cause the trailer really, yeah, it really sells it really well. I really, mm-hmm. I really been into like movies that I haven't seen. I really want to mm-hmm. dive into a movie. You know, I think this is a movie that I would take to, you know, because it, it, there's probably another movie with this premise, but I don't think it's treated. I think because the trailer really sells it like a horror movie almost, you know. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I would love to see that turn yeah. into a black comedy. Yeah, the trailer does take it a bit more serious absolutely yeah yeah but like you're one of the friends like goes crazy and it's like yeah. trying to kill the other guys yes but you're you're going you're twisting it up yeah uh, i which i dig i mean that's the point of i think mm-hmm. of reboots and remakes you know what i mean make it our own yeah there's no point in redoing something exactly the same exactly that's why fucking vince von psycho sucks so <laughs> hard <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah anything else no nah, that's that's all i got for that cool 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 well, yeah. let's move on to mine Speaking of Psycho... Yes! We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm in my room. Okay, so uh, what happened? Uh, what was my last movie? I don't even remember my last movie. It was so <laughs> great. It was so great. All right, so Black Hole fucking killed it. Yes. Fucking made... I'm, the, I'm made, a must-see director. <laughs> yeah, it made Joker money. It, Damn. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. 
So we have yet another comic we want you to take a stab at. They're like, Radar Comics is a thing, huh? Yeah. Your Spawn did good. Mm-hmm. My fucking Black Hole did good. Now they, they, they want to keep the next on going, trend. right? Next trend, right? Yeah, fuck superheroes. Yep. All right, we want you to take a stab at Nailbiter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, you gave this to me, and I was like, okay, I've always known of Nailbiter. Yeah. But I never read it. Mm-hmm. And I did read it. <clears throat> and um, some of these horror comics that I read has a little bit of humor in there, you know what I mean? Like, uh, a yeah. little bit... But yeah, um, so when I read this book, I don't know, for some reason, I was thinking Seven. Yeah? Yeah, like, that's it the is, vibe. It is pretty similar. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it is. But, like, I would bring the vibe heavy, like a noir yeah. theme to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but for those who don't know, you know, it's, um, you know, I mean, can you sum, sum up the synopsis a little bit? You know what I mean? Like Not I, well. No, <laughs> not it's well. It's been probably two years since I read it. Yeah, well, I read it... The, literally the next day you gave it to me mm-hmm. and I was like you know not that I forgot it but I was like I, I dove into another project too yeah pretty deeply you know what I mean but like yeah it's an independent horror comic series that was created by this guy named Joshua Williams and Mike Henderson you know um, <clears throat> so the comic so the comic book series <clears throat> the synopsis is the series centers around the fictional town of Buckaroo Oregon which has produced 16 of the United States' worst serial killers. Its most recent creation was Edward Charles Warren, which is a hell of a character, yeah. by the way, otherwise known as the Nail Biter. Due to his prediction of chewing off his victims' nails and part of their flesh, by the series' start, Warren has been caught by the FBI agent Charles Carroll. Mm-hmm. However, Car- Carroll has since been gone missing, leaving it up to his friend and NSA agent Nick. Nicholas Finch to search for him. Nicholas decides to start searching in, B- in Buckaroo where he begins to question why this small town has produced so many serial killers. Yeah. It's a very interesting concept. And uh, it's actually really funny. I read it and uh, one of the first scenes is when they catch nail, the nail biter mm-hmm. and he's actually in Riverside, California for some reason. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I, was I was like, like oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's so <laughs> random, but then they go back to Oregon never be yeah, seen again. Just never mentioned it again. Yeah, never mentioned again. But for some reason, nail biter was, um, he, he was acquitted yeah. by the charges. Maybe not, he wasn't acquitted. He was actually found not guilty, mm-hmm. which, you know, people were going crazy and, you know, the town of Buckaroo yeah. is like, why the fuck is he, you know, He's like OJ. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's what it kind of tells. But um, but yeah, I would actually change it. I would change it up quite a bit. Yeah, I'd actually because like, like the t- the the town producing sixteen serial killers was like was kind of silly to me a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, like you know, but it is a comic book. Yeah. But I would change it to a serial killer cult time. You know, I'm not saying yeah. that it's any less ridiculous, but I would say like the leader. <clears throat> whoever the leader is by the way Mm -hmm. because that's always a mystery in like the the thing is like Mm -hmm. these you know there's always stories of these serial killers or whatever Mm -hmm. but i would change it to a cult of serial killers that are is actually in the town terrorizing people yes it's not like these legends or anything like that so you have these guys mass producing yes serial killers pretty much all right you know um change yeah change their name the buckaroo bit butchers basically right that's what their name you know um you know, there's quite a bit of killer, serial killers that they name that I actually would want to use in the in the thing. Like the crossbone serial killer. He makes sculptures out of people's bones. Mm-hmm. Um, the cat calling blonde sewed men's mouths shut. You know, mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of, you know, interesting stuff. You know, obviously there's a town cover-up that I'm, that I'm trying to, like, keep in there. You know what yeah. I mean? <clears throat> Another interesting character, well, I think the, the rate... What's his name? Rayleigh? Rayleigh? Riley or something like that? Something like the, that. The, yeah, the, he's like, he owns like a serial killer store. Yeah. It's kind of like a gift shop, but for like serial killers, and he mm-hmm. has all the knowledge and whatnot, you know. <clears throat> but uh, one of the biggest parts, like towards the end mm-hmm. of like the our main and protagonist, uh, Nicholas Finch, he gets, um, he's actually like, you know, he's investigating this thing because his friend's missing. Yeah. But towards the end, he they people find out like he's on trial for murder. Mm-hmm. Which was a crazy twist, and I was like, "Oh shit, I wasn't expecting it." Yeah. But um, but yeah, and like in the beginning of the story, like he's like putting a gun to his head, like he's like come, you know, you. But like it's never really like mentioned afterwards after mm-hmm. he does that, so you're like, "Oh why?" And then towards the end, you're like, "Okay, maybe I get it now." Mm-hmm. I would change that. Yeah. Yeah, I would change it to mm-hmm. he was supposed to be in another case All somewhere right. else. Mm-hmm. 
working on another investigation, but he's busy over here in Oregon, mm-hmm. you know, trying to catch, you know, his Carol's, you know, his friend. And he's also, um, his partner basically in the fucking thing is the sheriff of Oregon. It's a girl, mm-hmm. a blonde who I'm forgetting her name, unfortunately, but for some reason I see like Brie Larson, Brie yeah. Larson playing her. All she's right. a really, she has a spice to her for some reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, know, you got to get some feminine stuff in there. She's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. But she's, I mean, she's really badass in the comic. Well, I yeah. portray that pretty white and nicely. Mm-hmm. But other than that, yeah, man. I mean, I do, I did enjoy the comic. Yeah. And I would leave it on a cliffhanger, like big cliffhanger. Yeah. Like they don't even solve the case. <laughs> <laughs> leave people angry. You yeah. know what I mean? I was gonna leave the theater like, fuck this guy. Yeah. I'm not watching any more of his movies. Pretty much. Yeah. Taking black hole off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You fuckers loved it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I don't know why. For some reason, I I got like a, like the look to it. I want to have like a very noir. I yeah. feel like Seven did, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A very dark noir feeling to it, you know? But yeah, yeah. that's all I got for it, mm-hmm. unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, for those who haven't read, I do, I do recommend it, though. Mm-hmm. They they do have that, that um, how do you say, uh, typical comic book humor. You know, I feel like there should yeah. there's jokes that shouldn't be <laughs> at the spot where, you know, like somebody's trying to get killed. Yeah. You know it I mean? kind of works in the comic, but yeah, saying it out loud yeah, would be in the weird. movie would, would take it out. Yeah. But um, another scene, though, there's a scene where, like, the lights keep flick, Like, they're they're trying to, like, do an autopsy on the body or find out who, like, this dead body belongs to or who mm-hmm. it is, rather. And um, the lights keep flickering on and off. Yeah. And there's a scene. Yeah, there's a serial killer in there. Mm-hmm. He keeps appearing and he's disappearing when the lights. You can do a lot of cool shit with that. And, mm-hmm. I, you know. But yeah, so for those who don't have a red nail biter. Pick it up. It's on Comixology, the va- first volume at least. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I'm gonna pick up uh, the second volume to read because I was I'm very intrigued to what happened next, you know. But the, you know, Nailbiter is it actually says right here it's set to return in 20, 2020. Really? So yeah, yeah, that's what it said. Because I, I think there's there's five there's five trades right now. I think. Oh really? Five yeah. trades? Fuck. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. But yes, apparently it's set to return. Yeah, they're not real thick though. Okay, <laughs> they're really short. I yeah. feel like I feel like the first volume was pretty long when I was reading it, but mm-hmm. I mean, but anyway, but yeah. Back yeah. to you. Back Which to one are we me. on? You're in your fourth one or what? Fourth and last one? Third. Third. Okay. Third. So your third one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. You got a grin on your face. <laughs> yes, because I personally really love this project. I really mm-hmm. wish it was. I really wish you would have. Uh, gave it to me because i'm really jealous yeah but i i, I but i think you, i thought you would dig it mm-hmm. so um so we're not doing a comic book movie right now mike it's like the first one of this list i know right well we're actually going second. i mean people know it as a movie but like it's actually a, a novel by hg wells hg wells for those who don't know wrote wrote fucking the invisible man he fucking did a lot of cool stuff mm-hmm. he's a legend of the science fiction community type you know sci-fi or you know Science, yeah, science fiction, mostly, but um, but yeah. So they come with you with this, mm-hmm. like, so Mike, we saw you in an interview. You mentioned this movie that you saw that really creeped you out as a kid. Yeah, it's called the uh, The Island of Doctor Moreau. Like, oh fuck, I'm gonna give myself <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, they were. I mean, let's say you were in a fucking, mm-hmm. you know, they say that title and they slide the fucking book to you. And they're like, what do you think? You think you can tackle it? Yeah. I'm going to need some help. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wonder who you can get help with. Yeah. Oh. There, there's two people I'm going to call. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who? I'm going to call you. Okay, cool. Thank I'm going to call Guillermo. Oh, oh, yeah. Guillermo would be perfect for this, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he really would. Because you told me you were going to give me this. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, if I didn't do it, Guillermo would be the perfect person to do this movie. I think he would. I think he would knock it out of the park. Yeah. I almost wanted to like make a Twitter and tell, "Hey, if you haven't read this? Check this out. I think you would. I, I, you'd really man, feel knowing this. that man, he probably does know of it though. Yeah, but um, Guillermo del Toro is one of the people who have a lot of movies who haven't been made. Mm-hmm. At Mountains of Madness, one of those. But um, but yeah, The Island of Doctor Moreau. <clears throat> so, for those who don't know, the text of the novel is narration by this character named Edric Pen- Prendick. A Prendic. shipwrecked, yeah. <laughs> a shipwrecked man rescued by a, by a passing boat who is left on the island home of Doctor Moreau, a mad scientist who creates human-like hybrid beings from animal via dissection. 
The novel deals with a number of philosophical themes, including pain and cruelty, moral responsibility, human identity, and human interference with nature. And um, H.G. Wells described this book as an exercise in youthful blasphemy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, like I always, I always liked the the concept of it. Just, Mm -hmm. I mean, the human hybrid concept in general always freaked me out as a kid. Me too. You know, it's like one of the scariest fucking things. Right. (laughs) Like, even just, like, walking through Target, there mm-hmm. was these fucking books where it had, like, that hollow shift where you turn the book and the picture's oh, a little bit different. Yeah. One side had, like, a normal kid, mm-hmm. and on the other side it had him, like, turning into an anteater or some shit. What the hell? There was a bunch of these books. Each one was, like, a different kid turning into a different animal. That's crazy. I don't remember what they were called, but they were fucking creepy. I bet. It sounds creepy. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. So, what, I mean, what did you, t- I mean, you, uh, I'm glad you would call me because I would love to do this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, anything else that you brought that you would want to talk about with the fucking you know that you brought to it or something like that? I would do some stuff. Cause I mean, for those who don't know, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to put the we'll add some more pictures. But like, mm-hmm. there's a concept art for this director who was supposed to direct you know the movie that ended up coming out in 1996, I believe, where he wanted you know it's the classic studio getting involved, actors being assholes. Like it was yeah. just a nightmare shoot. One of the worst shoots ever from Legends. Yeah. Yeah, and he had this concept for it. And, you know, the concept art's fucking amazing Mm -hmm. and gruesome and dark. Yeah. One of my favorites was uh, when, like, it's like that wolf-like creature is, like, in the water looking at the, like, the scientists. I think that might be the the hyena man. The hyena man, yes. Hyena man. creepy fucker. Yes, man. Those concept arts drawings of him of hyena man mm-hmm. fucking blew me away i was like man that would be so that would be something to see on screen wouldn't it yeah you know what i mean oh man yeah this would be a really dark really fucked up movie oh yeah big time uh, i mean if you think like it's gonna it's kind of it's what my black hole was probably gonna be for you right it's like you're gonna f- something close yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, that's gonna be fucking yeah blasphemy <laughs> like like hg well said yeah for some reason, I see Adrian Brody as the lead. Okay. This poor bastard is fucking shipwrecked and gets picked up, thinks he's finally fucking saved. Yeah. And dropped on a, this fucking hell of an island. Mm-hmm. Because I was reading a synopsis, and yeah. he doesn't just, like, walk into fucking Dr. Moreau's house and, like, oh, hey, I'm here now. Yeah. He's, like, walking through the woods, and, he like, he sees these Things. fucking... Yeah creatures out of like the corner of his eye and right. stuff scary shit yeah and he like he gets like chased by like a leopard man yes. and shit before he finally makes it there and then finds out all the fucked up testing yeah this guy's man. doing yeah like i mean yeah just you saying that man you could do some good shit with that yeah and i one of I mean, again one of my fears was like you know going on a cruise ship or something and like crashing and like landing on this or you know finding shore to this island that i have no idea what's on yeah whether it's like some tribe or fucking fucking leopard man (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. i think that's a really big fear you know and i think you could play with that as well you know it'd be a scary thought too you know and you know and then yeah going through the fucking woods seeing things the human Mm -hmm. hybrids you know what i mean like it's fucking terrifying yeah well and he's he's staying at dr moreau's for a while before he finds out like what's going on Mm mm-hmm then finally there's something happens in the plot and he like goes out and starts living with these guys. Yeah. Then he finally makes it back to civilization, mm-hmm. back to London. And he's like, I don't want to fucking see another person, another animal ever again. <laughs> right. He becomes like an astrologist or some shit. Yeah, man, dude. I don't know, man. I always feel like it always sucked. Cause I mean, I know there's been a couple incarnations of the movie besides mm-hmm. the 1996 Val Kimmer and, um, Marlon Brando. Brando version. Which I haven't watched, but I mean, I doubt they had the, the amount of grotesque yeah. uh, potential of what this project could have, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I've seen the Marlon Brando one. I wasn't really impressed. <laughs> but um, but I, hopefully, I think there's one that came out in 77 that I should check out. I just want to see. But I mean, but yeah, this, is, this, is, this, this project has always fascinated me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, man. All I mean... I'm glad you did more deep dive to it. You know, I think mm-hmm. you do a lot of cool stuff with it. You know. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> be a fucked up movie. It would be that fucked up movie is our thing. Yeah. Alrighty. Now, <clears throat> my next, my last one, right? I think this is my last one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. So this one's gonna be a P 
people are going to be like, oh, like people are going to be might, might be surprised with this one, right? Mm-hmm. All right. We have for you yet another comic, comic book, book property. Mm-hmm. We want you to tackle the Punisher. Mm. The Punisher. One of the most simple m- most simple characters of all time, right? Yeah. And just a pissed off anger dude out for revenge, right? Yeah. Well, the Punisher has had some movies incarnated. Yeah. The 2004 movie we're a fan of, Thomas Jane. Yeah. And then there was that Punisher. Was my my first introduction to Punisher. Really? Yeah. So you didn't know it was a comic book at all, huh? Well, I I knew, like I heard about it, but I never I hadn't read it or anything. Okay. Well, <clears throat> each movie has had like mixy reviews. You know, the yeah. first one with Dolph Lundgren, that one was like nobody was really feeling. The pun, the you know, t- the Thomas Jane Punisher has a fan base, but. Not it didn't do enough to like garner any sequels. Yeah. 2008 Punisher, I think it was in theaters for like two months. And yeah. They took it out, ran right away to DVD with Ray Stevenson. Mm-hmm. That came out in 2008. Very dark and very a lot darker and heavy with the violence, more mm-hmm. so in the 2004 Punisher. Which yeah, is a lot surprising. more gunplay. Yeah, big time. So, if I were if I were mm-hmm. tasked to take the Punisher on, man, I would make it. I don't want to say even darker, but I mean, as far as like t- subject matter, mm-hmm. you know, like I would, I'd go all in. Yeah. Like the first half of this movie is going to be Frank Castle in Vietnam. All right. Yeah, it's going to, he's going to be in the shit. Yeah. But it's not going to start off like that. I don't think, you know, for the, the influence for this was, uh, I read Garth Ennis's Punisher, mm-hmm. which is fucking amazing. One of the best reads ever. Honestly, this, you know, I recommend this. I mean, I, we recommend everything that we <laughs> Yeah. But this one as well. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, yeah. Honestly, it's not going to start off with, like, a Frank Castle. Frank Castle is going to be, like, almost like a almost like a secondary character in the yeah. first half. Yeah. Every, the, just going to be part of the platoon? Yeah. Well, no, he's a captain, right? Captain. But it's going to be told narration through this character. Right. who He's going to be more of, like, um, the Willem Dafoe character in Platoon. Like he's, you know, right. the guy with the heart doesn't really want to fight these, you know, mm-hmm. fight this war really confused by it but he's narrating about how frank castle scares him yeah you know what i mean like he's like captain castle get us through and he's like he's like he's basically saying you know <clears throat> like as much as i you know fear going out there the fact that you know frank you know captain castle's here is, makes me feel you know safe you know yeah so yeah man um <clears throat> so there's a narration of marine a marine said where you know you know he will not die in vietnam he will not fall in love with war like Frank Castle. Because that's his impression of Frank Castle, which essentially is kind of true. Like, Frank Castle yeah. is this kind of like, is a, is a psychopath in this. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, you know, he doesn't show it, but he kind of enjoys killing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, there's going to be one scene where there's going to be like a violent shootout after, you know. Oh, no, no, hold on, hold on. Before that. <laughs> so, there's a scene in the book that I want to put. Yeah. In this in this movie in the mm-hmm. first half, so you know it's gonna feel like a Vietnam movie. Mm-hmm. You know, there's gonna be a part where one of the one of Frank Castle's cadets, are you know, um, is gonna rape a woman, right. a Vietnam woman. You know, and it's mm-hmm. you know it's very dark, it's very serious. Mm-hmm. But uh, before he could actually like rape her, like he's on top of her, and you just Frank Castle shoots the woman right in the head. Oh, shit. Blood, blood splurts on the fucking cadet's face, and he's All like, right. "What the fuck?" I thought he was gonna shoot the guy. No, we'll, yeah. we'll watch the okay, right. hear out for this. This is also in the book, by the way. I'm smiling yeah. it, unfortunately, but it'll still, yeah, it, putting this in the movie. Mm-hmm. So, and Captain Castle, his he utters the word. He's like, "We don't rape. Mm-hmm. We just kill the enemy." And he just walks away, stone faced. Damn. And then, so it cuts to the scene where the guy, the man who was gonna rape the woman, is washing his face. Mm-hmm. Right, he's washing his face. Frank Castle puts his boot on the back of his neck and drowns him. Oh shit! Yeah, but then our narrator, mm-hmm. who you know, who's the one the foe in the platoon, he 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 witnesses this murder happen. Yeah, and he's like, oh shit, you know what I mean? So it's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they get back to the base. Yeah. Frank Castle goes up to him and he's like, he's how come you haven't told anybody? And mm-hmm. he's like, you saw, he's like, you saw me? He's like, he's like, of course I did. <laughs> you know, and then like. <clears throat> This is the first time, like, Frank Castle really opens up yeah. to some of his cadets or whatever, but he tells, like, 
you know, he was like, <clears throat> you know, he was like, why'd you kill him? You mm-hmm. know, he's like, and he utters the word, you know, he needed to be punished, mm-hmm. you know, and then the soldier's like, well, what about the girl? And Frank gets angry. He's like, don't be fucking stupid, private. Mm-hmm. He was like, if I would have let her go, he's like, the, he's like, you guys wouldn't have looked at me the same. He's like, if I would have brought her back here, he's like, she wouldn't have gave a shit. She would have been raped and shot in the head, like after. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, in my, he's like, in my view, I did her a favor. Yeah. Fucking like that kind God of shit. Damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this character is not like you know, you're not gonna root for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's yeah. a troubled individual. Mm-hmm. And then eventually a shootout happens, right? Yeah. So they find the platoon. They find this base, and they mm-hmm. fucking shootout happens, and our narrator dies. He dies within the shit, like, as shit's mm-hmm. going down. And then it's down to Frank Castle. And just, like, it just, in the middle of battle, he just has this look in his eyes, you know, mm-hmm. where he's on, he's a by himself, and, like, just, the scene, the screen just goes black, right? Mm-hmm. The screen goes black. Calvary's on the way. Mm-hmm. See if there's any survivors. Yeah. They, they find Frank Castle sitting sitting in the middle a whole bunch of blood on him a whole bunch of dead okay. bodies around him fucking one man army yep pretty <laughs> much now in the book there's like this narration going inside Frank's head where it's like mm-hmm. he's making a deal yeah where he's like he's like, I could get you out of this Frank he's like all you gotta do is say the magic words be like yes mm-hmm. he's like but he's like it's gonna come at a cost mm-hmm. this is gonna cost you if I get you out of here and he, he eventually says yes mm-hmm. and he fucking made it through the shit he fucking killed everybody and then when he gets home in the book mm-hmm. You know, he says, I told you there was going to be a price. He sees, he looks at his family and he was like, this is what, this is what's going to cost you. Mm-hmm. Basically. I'm not going to put the narration in there, but yeah, that's what like it tells. And then the second half is, you know, he comes back. But before that, there's going to be like a scene where like Frank Castle's kind of like, you know, like he knows he's a murdering sick bastard, yeah. but his family is his second chance at a normal life. Mm-hmm. But that eventually gets taken away from him, obviously. And, yeah, revenge, revenge, revenge afterwards, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, yeah, that's 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 what I dove into with The mm-hmm. Punisher. Like, seeing, like, you have to see the, like, a lot of people, you know. And I, won't, I don't think I would even show the family being killed. It yeah. would just jump straight to, like, after. All right. You know, mm-hmm. in the middle of the story. And, like, yeah, I think it would be fascinating and interesting to see Frank in that environment, the Vietnam War and shit mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, just fucking see what kind of truly what this character is. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a a violent motherfucker, you know. Yeah. He has problems. Big problems. <laughs> Big fucking problems. More than just, you know, being a revenge, revengeful yeah. person, you know. Yeah, big problems. Mm-hmm. And I want people to see that. I want, you know, it's going to start like Apocalypse Now and then turn into something, you know, else after. But yeah, that's all I got for the Punisher. Man. Yeah. So like, yeah, I put a lot of thought into it mm-hmm. i just want to see that shit you know what i mean yeah it sounds fucking badass yeah it sounds crazy right yeah but like obviously all those punisher movies are violent but this is like a different kind of violence this is not yeah. fun violence you know yeah. what you're gonna see like you're gonna see brute brutal shit yeah you know it's gonna be tough for some people mm-hmm. to watch i know it's not gonna be for everybody <laughs> that's for fuck sure yeah you know but yeah man that's it that's yeah. all i got yeah. I think it was a good one to end on for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. No thoughts of who you might want to... Oh, well, I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. This guy that I have in mind... Okay, mm-hmm. so first of all, I'm going to mention who I wish I could cast. Yeah. And he's really old now. He probably can't pull it off. Even though the next... Like, the Punisher Mac, like the Garth Ennis Punisher, mm-hmm. is very old after he gets back from the war. You know, yeah. like, it's modern day now. Like, you know, he's an old man. So maybe I can, but, like, mm-hmm. I would still keep him, like young you know yeah. what i mean but like if a young fred ward you know what i mean right. like i remember seeing him in this movie called uh southern comfort mm-hmm. he played one of the bad you know the bad soldiers that you know and he just he just he just oozed the punisher to me you know yeah. so that's who i would want to go with but um it's kind of tough because this actor has been in a few comic book related things lately really yeah and i'm like man People will just be like, ah, another comic book movie. But I think he it's like, could... oh, it's that guy from that other thing I watched. Yes, another comic book. But I, I, I do truly think he could pull it off and he could do it. And his name is Carl Urban. 
right. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about Carl Urban? As I really like Carl Urban. Me too. I've yeah. always loved Carl. He's always been he's always been solid. Yeah. But you know he's been uh, he's been another Garth Ennis project, uh, The Boys. Yeah. He's actually one of the main dudes from The Boys. You know, the, another comic related thing. He's in the great Judge Dredd movie, the Dredd yeah. movie that came out, not the Stallone one, but the 2014 yeah. dope ass one. Really underrated. Very underrated. Yeah. Underappreciated as well. Yeah. For those who haven't seen it yet, but like that's that was my only thing where I was like, like man, like that would fucking, you know, be a little let down. I'm not let down, but I'd be like, you know, people would be like, oh, he's on this, he's on that, you know what I mean? But yeah. I could totally see him. Another person who I thought though, mm-hmm. I think would be funny in a way, <laughs> because I wanted because I did want to cast an older actor a little bit. Yeah. But Sean Bean. All right. It'd be new because. But the funny part about it, he's known as the guy who always gets fucking killed. And in <laughs> yeah. this, he would be the guy who's the fucking hardest dude to kill ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I just looking at a picture of him, I was like, oh, yeah, he could capture that like that roughness that I, yeah. Frank Castle has. You know what I mean? But I think I think I'm going to go towards uh, towards Carl Urban, though. Yeah. yeah. I think Sean Bean did publicly say. Oh, really? He's. He doesn't want to do anything else where he dies in it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, that's the case. Maybe he can audition for it. Yeah. But, yeah, that's the... Make up for fucking... Yeah. <laughs> that's the running Kill joke, everyone. right? Yeah. Yeah, man. But, yeah, that's that's all I got, man. I think we got a, got a lot of good ones here, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, man. I mean, a lot of good properties here. Now it's time to pick which one's the best, which yeah. one do we want to elaborate a little bit more in the mm-hmm. next week, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, I wonder if we should flip a coin again to see. You know, I mean, you want to? Where's the coin going? Well, I, I don't know actually. Um, maybe. Okay, we we are the ultimate. We are the ultimate. Uh, you know, it's gonna be up to you know. My pick is gonna be up to my you know like my stuff. I'm gonna pick it right. Yeah. And you're gonna pick it too, but we're gonna tell each other which one. So yeah, like I'm basically gonna pick what which one I would want you to elaborate more on next week, and mm-hmm. then you're gonna give me your pick. You don't have to. You know, again, don't feel guilt tripped. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, my pick would ult- Oh, wait. What the fuck? We forgot yeah. your last one. <laughs> Holy shit. I was about to fucking forward this bitch up. Yeah. Man, I felt bad. My bad, bro. It's cool. It's yeah. Cool. You have one I wasn't going to say nothing. I was rolling with it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> no, no. That's Let's not go fair. Get Del Taco. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> you had one more. Dang it. I was yeah. like, maybe it's because I got fucking like. I went so long with the Punisher thing. I thought you're I was like, deep. I you're was deep. You're deep in it. You're a nom. Deep. Yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> you're a changed man. Thousand miles there. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you have one more. Yeah. That's the one that I knew that you were gonna fucking like. I, I remember when I texted you and you were yeah. like, "Fuck yeah!" Yeah. <laughs> you literally were the said, "Fuck yeah!" Mm-hmm. But yeah, so you're okay. So they obviously come radar comics to the range right now. Obviously, yeah. right? So, so they said you okay. Well, since <laughs> it's your favorite. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let's play this scenario out differently, okay? Right. So like, they're like, you know, Mike, what do you want to do? Is there a comic book series that what you want to do? All right, you know what I mean? Well, there is this one. Tell us. It's called Mighty Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Rated R, Mighty Mouse. Oh yeah, he's gonna eat a baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be a gnarly. Never yeah, mind. that would be. <laughs> <annoying. laughs> Never mind. We're gonna get off track. Okay, <laughs> what's what's the comic? It's Harold County. No, I've never read Harold County. Yeah, it's one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. Really? Yeah, the art is just amazing. I mean, the cover is very like haunting. Yeah, you know, the um, entire book is done in watercolors. Oh man, really? Yeah, I every, didn't even know that. Every page is a painting. So, for those who don't know, so <clears throat> Harold County is about this person. This is it a little girl. Uh, is it a girl named Emmy, right? Yeah, Emmy. She, Emmy always knew that. Deep dark in the in the deep dark woods surrounding her home crawl crawled with ghosts, goblins, and zombies. But on the eve of her eighteenth birthday, she learns that she is connected to these creatures and to land it and to the land itself in a way she never imagined. Yeah. Now that sounds like that sounds like kind of like a Gamma del Toro project too, don't you think? You it does I mean? kind of. You know There's I mean? a lot of little monsters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I never read it. No. Always known of it. Always known of it. It's always I've always seen it on my recommendations list. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I'm gonna get to it eventually. Yeah. If you it's know? not on Comicsology, I can let you borrow it. I th- I, th- I gotta check. We- we'll talk after. Yeah. But anyway, you were really excited about this one, right? Yeah. It had to be the main event, right? Yeah. Well, there was. I was laughing when you brought it up because we've we've talked about it before. Because there's a couple panels I want to get tattooed. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
But anyways, we digress. Maybe this, you could put those images up there. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's how I get the job. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Anyway. Like, I am dedicated. Yep. Ben Affleck didn't have a fucking Batman <laughs> tattoo. Get out of here. <laughs> On his chest? Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, I mean, close, I'm, uh, I'm guessing close to the comic you're going to go for, right? Oh, yeah, it's going to be... It's gonna be real close. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you like to add, casting or anything like that? I was. I have someone in mind. Mm-hmm. What was she, your biggest, your well, biggest thought of the project though? She might be a little old. Oh really? Yeah. Who? Dakota Fanning. Oh okay. She could pull it off eighteen though. Yeah. Still could work though. I don't. Mm-hmm. I think you know. Yeah. Continue. But there's yeah there's some really dark scenes, in just this first issue. Hmm. Because. Talk about it. All right, so the series circles around this little girl, Emmy, who is the reincarnation of this witch that the whole town murdered 18 years ago. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn. So she's turning 18, and weird things start happening. And so the the town thinks that she's fucking the evil witch yeah. to come back. So they try to lynch her ass. What? Yeah, there's like a scene where like her dad is like choking the shit out of her. Oh, shit. And then uh, there's this creepy fucking skinned boy who she carries around his skin in like a satchel. That's like well, I mean, the cover of the book it has this like uh, this like yeah, it has the skin. It has a skin like creeping out of this like little box or whatever. Yeah, it's really yeah, it's really creepy. Yeah, so she fucking carries that shit around with her and it talks to her. What? Yeah, because the, the rest of the boy was just like this fucking meat man. <laughs> oh my god! He's <laughs> like hanging out in trees and running through the forest and shit. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking gnarly. It is gnarly. Yeah, there's a scene where she's like standing next to this river, and across the river, mm-hmm. she sees the little boy before he loses his skin, mm-hmm. and she calls out to him, and he runs away. So she chases after him. She's like, "Don't go over there. There's thorns." Mm-hmm. And so she pushes through the through the thorns. She finds the fucking just the skin like flopped on the thorns. And oh, she, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. She fucking takes it home with her oh my and puts it in a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> so you think, okay, so how would you think of this, would it be good for uh, a Netflix series or an actual film movie? What do you think? What's your call? It would be tough. It would be tough, right, in a movie form? Yeah. Really? Okay. So I think I'd have to go with the series. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, Netflix, you can do whatever the fuck you want, so yeah. I, mean, I think it'd be perfect. Mm-hmm. How many episodes do you think? I think first season I'd go maybe eight episodes. Perfect. Maybe like 45 minutes to an hour per episode. Nice, nice. Dang, it's a long series, huh? Yeah. It came out fairly recently, right? Four years ago, 2015. Yeah. Damn. It's pretty new. Mm -hmm. That's great. I feel like I've been seeing it for so long now. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm going to need to read it, man. I think I'm pretty sure it's on Comixology. Yeah. But, uh, you know, ho- hopefully if I, after I read it, I'm going to end up buying it. Yeah. You know? Well, if not, I have the first three volumes. Yeah? So, Damn. Yeah. When did you get those? Like, for, like right when it came out, I bet, huh? Pretty close. Yeah? That's yeah, it was like three years ago. It's like maybe when a year. When did you discover it? You just saw it and you thought I was, it was just like... clicking through Amazon looking for shit to read. Like, oh, shit, that looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I clicked past it a couple times. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, I got to check it yeah, out. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Because it wasn't expensive either. No? No. Nah. That's good. Yeah. If it was a hardcover, maybe it would. <laughs> oh, probably. Yeah. Anything else, man? Anything else you want? I mean, oh, a Netflix series would definitely work. Damn. Yeah. I'm just trying to imagine a, a skinned boy walking around, like, running yeah. around in the woods, man. That'd be pretty cool. Be half our budget. <laughs> <laughs> Practical? Practical. Of course, right? I mean, there would be some stuff that that would have to be CGI. Yeah, okay, okay. Because, okay. like, the fucking... The skin can be practical, but when it's fucking, like, talking and shit. Oh, so you actually see the skin talking, huh? Yeah, you see, like, the lips moving. Oh, it has, like, glowing eyes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. the glowing eyes is also on the cover of the book. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, Mike Mignola, creator of Hellboy, mm-hmm. uh, was quoted saying, a rare thing, a rare, a rare thing both wonderfully charming and genuinely disturbing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that pretty much, sum, like, sums it up, I bet, right? Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. Yeah, so writer, Colin Bun, Colin Bunn, Mm-hmm. Artist Tyler Cook and cover artist Tyler Cook. So, yeah, for those who haven't you know read it, I'm trying to, as previews of some panels I want to look at actually. Oh, you see. definitely yeah. should. Okay, yeah, I definitely see that vibe. Oh wow, yeah, that's really creepy. Yeah. The hanging part. Okay. Yeah, it definitely has like a paint, like a painting. Yeah, every every panel is painted. Wow, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. 
There's a tree. It's pretty interesting, man. Oh yeah, spooky old tree. <laughs> spooky old tree. Yeah, yeah, they. That's good shit. Uh, Emmy was actually born out of that tree. Oh really? Yeah, because that's where they hung Damn, and so burned like... and murdered. Oh, the witch, the witch right? Okay. Yeah. Dang. So this is you're going super fantasy with this super dark horror fantasy, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's oh man, that's cool, man. I really. I'm convinced. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna give it a read soon. Yeah, you, you know, should. Comicsology, man. Mm-hmm. That's cool, man. Anything else you want to add? You want to like uh, uh, Comicsology sponsors, please. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be fucking amazing. Right. <laughs> Hopefully one day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man. Anything else? Yeah, I'm good with it. For sure, bro. Yeah. I mean, man. I mean, I'm kind of torn on what I'm gonna pick. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm I'm actually kind of torn too. Yeah. Cause I I don't know. I mean, we'll find. Okay, so the one I would want you to like, want you to pick yeah. now that we could finally do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After I was, I got, I got too big for my britches apparently. Yeah. But um, the one I would want you to pick, bro. I mean, the one I want you to pick was uh, the the Doctor Moreau yeah. project. That's what I would want you to see, want to see from it's you. It's pretty strong. It is it's very right there. Yeah, big time. What was the What's the one that you want to see more of me? Oh man, it's tough. <laughs> man, I, I feel like I'm just as torn as you are on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Because Black Hole and Punisher both sound pretty fucking, fucking amazing, intense, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know what I'm gonna pick. Do yeah. you know what you're gonna pick? I mean, I'll go first since. I'm yeah, go first. Give you more time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to, because I dove really deep into the Punisher. Yeah. And again, I didn't write a lot of notes down for Black Hole. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously I think my passion for Black Hole really echoed mm-hmm. <laughs> during the talk. So I'm going to pick Black Hole. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go for. That's going to be my my pitch for next, not my pitch, but, you know, what I would want to do with it next week. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully I'll, hopefully I get the fucking, hopefully I'll get to read it, you know, to, again, just to get another refreshment yeah. in there, you know. You have to hit up that girl again. You yeah, for those yeah for those who don't know for that for those who don't know, I met this girl. And I let her borrow it, and then, you know, um, as what tends to happen. Yeah, she just never talked to me again, and she kept my book. I don't yeah. know if that was her ending plan that she wanted to do, but I mean, it's what happened, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I could get the hardcover. I really love the hardcover of it. Yeah. There's like a special features one that's like a hundred dollars. Goddamn. Yeah, I might buy it though. Yeah. <laughs> treat yourself. <laughs> yeah, treat myself. But anyway. So yeah, I would want you to see Doctor the to get the Doctor Moreau, but you're yeah. gonna pick what one? Oh, man, pick yeah, it, man. Hmm. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you could choose two, I guess, but I mean, it's gonna be a lot to pitch tomorrow. Oh, that's different. It's gonna be a three hour episode or something. <laughs> oh man. I'm looking at I'm looking at Mike right now. He's a uh, very uh he's very he's very torn. I am. He is very torn. God damn it. What's it? Do, I mean, do you have like a, a top two right now? Oh, yeah. It's Tell definitely, me the top two. It's definitely between Harold County and Dr. Moreau. Okay, cool. Yeah. Alrighty. I mean, we talked a lot about Dr. Moreau. Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go with Dr. Moreau. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool, man. Sweet. I'm actually, I'm actually really surprised. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was, it was hard to say no to Harold County. Yeah. It was oh, really yeah. Hard. That, but I mean,. You can give me an excuse to buy the fucking Dr. Moreau comic. <laughs> the oh, yeah. graphic novel I was yeah. looking at. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't even know about that. I'm going to definitely go check it out. I just saw it on Google Images. I was like, is there a fucking comic version of it? There should be. <laughs> yeah, there should be. And I was like, oh, shit, there is. Yeah, so now I'm going to have to read that. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully you get some screen. You know, if you can borrow my comicsology, maybe they'll have it on there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, any more, anything you want to add, bro? It's fucking... Next week's gonna suck. We fucking blew our load. Yeah, we're, we'll be alright, man. Yeah. We'll be alright, bro. We'll be alright. Uh, so our next, so our next podcast next week, hopefully, you know, um, we'll give each other three or four more, four more books. Yeah. Or movies or whatever that we haven't, you know, mm-hmm. heard of or want to, you know, want to do, want to see each other do. But um, but yeah, um, nothing else to add. What else I was gonna say? Um, yeah, then next week we'll also pitch. You know, I'm gonna be. I'll be giving you more black hole. You're gonna give us more Doctor Moreau. Yeah. Yeah, man. We'll see what happens, bro. Mm-hmm. We'll see how what we do with these things. Let's not fuck it up, right? Yeah. But yeah, man. If, anything else? It's gonna be a tough week to follow. Yeah, big time, big yeah. time. We actually did some research. 
Yeah. But um. But yeah, let's uh let's close this bitch up, man. Um, yeah. Let's get some fucking Del Taco. Yeah, I'm fucking hungry. Um. All right, bro. This is the hey, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Chamber of Chills for the those two people who are watching. Yeah. Or maybe maybe giving each us a little too much credit. <laughs> but uh, one person watching, whatever the fuck. Thank thanks, you for mom. Listening. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for listening. I'll be home later. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Paul. I'm Mike. This is the Chamber of the Chills podcast. I think it right. I think it right. <laughs>